The famous American writer Ursula Le Guin expresses her own thoughts through a character in her book in these lines. The word must be heard in silence. There must be darkness to see the stars. The phrase has to do with the birth and death of all that exists. Every object in the universe has its beginning and its end. Some subatomic particles last as little as tenths of a second. Some microorganisms live between two hours and several days. Man's life expectancy counts several decades. But even stars eventually burn out after millions and billions of years of existence. And what about the universe itself? Is it also going to come to an end at some point? What will it be like? And what will happen after its death? Cosmo. First in outer space. The earliest theory of the genesis of our world is what is known as theory of the stationary universe or steady state universe. Supporters of this theory claim that the universe has no beginning and no end. It has always been and always will be in its steady state of equilibrium. However, very soon scientific estimations proved this theory likely to be wrong, as there are some irreversible processes taking place in the universe. In the 1910s and 1920s, the Big Bang theory was formulated and widely popularized. Today, it is one of the most consistent scientific theories and it is able to account for the universe's genesis and evolution. Dozens of scientists contributed to the development of the Big Bang Theory and Albert Einstein's works on the general theory of relativity laid the theory's foundation. The main conclusion this theory enabled scientists to arrive at is the supposition that the fate of the universe depends on dark energy, a theoretical type of energy causing space to expand. Be it as it may, at this point it is quite impossible to say anything definite about this physical phenomenon. There are a great number of theories about this, and each of them has its praiseworthy aspects and shortcomings. According to data we possess today, the age of the universe is calculated from the moment of the Big Bang, and is estimated at slightly less than 14 billion years. The universe is constantly expanding, and depending on the density of dark energy, it will either expand forever at a regularly increasing rate, or else the expansion will slow down and reverse. In this case, the universe is bound to compress into an infinitely small singularity, similar to what it originated from. Today, science is not ready to give a definite answer to the question which of these two possibilities will prevail. However, it is ready to suggest at least two equally possible scenarios of what may happen next, referred to as the Big Rip and the Big Crunch. The universe's expansion rate is proportional to distances between objects, the further some objects are located from each other, the higher the expansion rate. Imagine a balloon pumped with air. There are two dots on it. If we pump still more air into the balloon, the dots will get further away from each other. That's the way the expansion of the universe works. It is space itself that expands. The further the dots are initially located, the faster they get still further apart. At a certain point, this rate exceeds the speed of light. This point is known as the event horizon. All objects beyond it disappear from view and they drift away beyond the reach of the most advanced telescopes, never to be observed again. Just imagine. First, the remotest galaxies and clusters will disappear from the sky. Then, one by one, the Milky Way stars will fade away and to crown it all, it will be the turn for our sun to go dim. What a gloomy sight. If the Big Rip theory holds good, the universe's expansion rate will be constantly on the increase. This will lead to expansion forces gradually overcoming gravity forces. Following that, first galaxy clusters and then galaxies themselves and star clusters will be broken up. After that, it will be the turn for stellar systems to disintegrate as host stars will not have sufficient pull to keep their planets and satellites from floating away. At the next stage, matter will be reduced to atoms and these will be reduced to subatomic particles. Matter will effectively cease to exist. 
After this, physical laws as we know them will cease to be, and any further developments are quite impossible to predict. Observations today show that space expands and the expansion rate is on the increase. However, we are not familiar with the nature of dark energy. It may well have properties unknown to us at this point, and these may reverse the expansion processes. As a result, the universe will start contracting. This may well happen if general gravitation created by all matter in the universe exceeds its expansion force. This scenario is what is known as the Big Crunch. In this case, processes in the universe will run in the same manner until its size decreases five times. Galaxy clusters will come together as one supercluster, which in essence will fill the entire universe, considerably shrunk by this point. Meanwhile, inside the galaxies, events like births and deaths of stars planet formation and so on will keep taking place just like before. When the universe contracts 20 times more, its volume will account for just 1% of that of today's and all galaxies will blend into one. The relic radiation temperature by that time will measure 274 degrees Kelvin and it will still continue to grow. This means that there won't be any liquid water left in the universe and water is vital for biological life as we know it. Further contraction of space will cause the universe to heat up even more. Planets will first be burnt and then melted. All matter will crumple into an enormous cloud of boiling plasma. After that, atoms and subatomic particles will disperse and eventually the universe will collapse into a singularity similar to the one it used to be when it was born. There is a theory which is a kind of a spin-off of the Big Crunch theory. It is known as the Big Bounce Theory. According to the Big Bounce Theory, on reaching the state of singularity following the Big Crunch, the universe will be reborn as a result of yet another Big Bang, and the cycle will repeat itself again and again, supposedly forever, as far as it is possible to speak about eternity in conditions devoid of time and space. I will repeat myself yet again by saying that our knowledge about dark energy is too meager to speak about the duration of any of these scenarios. For all we know, the next big rip, or big crunch for that matter, will take place in a period when there are still stars and planets around. But what if it isn't the case? What will happen to the universe if its ultimate fate is still extremely remote in time? Still, the laws of physics imply that the universe as we more or less know it cannot exist forever. There are four clearly defined epochs in cosmology and each of them is associated with this or that particular phenomenon. We live in the so-called Stelliferous Era. There is a lot of interstellar gas in the parts of the universe around us. It is used as raw material for stars to form from. New stars are born from this gas and the process will continue until all interstellar gas has been depleted. This epoch is expected to be over in the period from 1 to 100 trillion years from now. By that time the Sun and the overwhelming majority of other stars will have depleted their nuclear fuel, subsequently turning into white dwarfs, neutron stars or black holes. I have actually already spoken about it in an earlier video. The next era is known as the Degenerate Era. There will not be any main sequence stars around anymore. Most matter in the universe will remain in the form of white and brown dwarfs and some matter will persist as neutron stars and black holes. It will take a great amount of time for all these objects to cool off, around a duodecillion or 10 to the power of 39 years. White dwarfs will gradually give off their heat in the form of radiation and become black dwarfs. As for brown dwarfs, they will cool off too. Thermonuclear reactions taking place in their interior at a sluggish rate will eventually stop completely. Gradually, most matter will be slurped by black holes. At this stage of the universe's evolution, dark matter annihilation and proton's disintegration will be the major processes. The proton is a subatomic particle that atoms known to science are built of. It is considered one of the most durable subatomic particles. Its life expectancy, as it were, accounts for approximately 100 duodecillion, or 10 to the power of 41 years. Now, by the time this era comes to an end, 
matter in the universe will look like a great ocean of freely floating elementary particles with an occasional neutron star or black hole tucked away among them. The next era is the black hole era. According to some theories, black holes will form clusters and eventually blend together, thus forming one single gargantuan black hole. Alternative theories suggest that black holes will slowly evaporate while emitting energy before vanishing completely. Black hole evaporation is a quantum effect produced by what is known as Hawking radiation. The smaller a hole, the more intensive its evaporation, which eventually strips the hole of all its matter and energy. This process is supposed to persist for 10 to the power of 100 years. This number is also referred to as Google. Be it as it may, eventually only dead expanses of space will be left in the universe. This space will contain debris left over from processes having taken place in the previous epochs – photons, electrons, positrons, neutrinos and quarks. Electrons and positrons will collide, thus causing annihilation. The universe may exist in this state practically forever, until the next big crunch or big rip at the very least. Either way, the humanity will be long gone at that time. Its existence is likely to be terminated in the Stelliferous Era. Our planet, meanwhile, will remain habitable for another billion years or so, and after that it will be burned by the ever-intensifying glow of the Sun. About five or six billion years later, our Sun, by then a red giant, will shed its outer layers and become a white dwarf. But what will happen after the universe dies? Disappointing as it is, there is absolutely no way we can answer this question. The trouble is, whatever the scenario, there won't be either time or space as we know them. Even if the Big Bounce Theory or the Big Crunch Theory is right, or else a new Big Bang takes place, thus giving birth to a new universe with a fresh set of galaxies and stars, we will simply never find out just like we will never find out what it used to be like in the universe before ours, because the word must be heard in silence. There must be darkness to see the stars. Feel free to express your opinion, leave a comment under the video or just hit the like button. If your inquiring minds crave for more exciting stuff on our channel, you're welcome to subscribe. Your support really means a lot to us and motivates us to produce still more videos for you to enjoy. Let's keep in touch.